I have currently installed Visual Studio's Community Edition and um, in Community Edition you get it for free you have a choice when it launches as to either signing in with your Outlook Hotmail account live account any of the Microsoft accounts really or just skipping it uh, I'll go ahead and say not now for this demo when it uh, first starts up I can choose a separate uh, different type of environment I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at general and blue and start Visual Studio now the installation of Visual Studio takes about 15 minutes if it has to download the uh, depending on your bandwidth it could take hours because it has to download not only the editing tools but it may also need to download the dotnet framework which is a collection of DLLs and other files that you can use code out of so there's a lot of features being added but once it's done it's pretty quick uh, as far as opening etc as you can see on the screen when you first install and start it up it'll go through this preparation process by the time you get done um, it will seem like Visual Studio is really slow but once you've owned it for a while and you've used it you'll see it's actually very quick now that uh, Visual Studio is finally uh, done with its configuration we can go through and start developing some code so I'm going to go up here and go file new uh, project and what we're going to see what we're going to see is what languages have been installed and uh, one of the options here is Python another one is C sharp uh, F sharp there's actually a bunch of things that are available some have already been installed and others have not so let's say I want to add Python to do my uh, do some Python programming I choose that and I say OK and it'll have to go through and download and install the, the tools for all that but as you can see it's it's pretty well designed to to add on features now I'll let it go ahead and do its thing here for a few minutes and since that might be kind of boring Yep, looks like it's going to be a little faster than that. Please close Visual Studio now to reduce the chance that the computer will restart will be required later. Sure. Go ahead and close that down. And continue. Python tools for Visual Studio. Say next. Microsoft Visual Studio Python. Sure. And update. Now, Visual Studio originally only ran on Windows but the new initiative is for it to run on uh, Apple and Linux as well so it's they're moving to an open source environment and that's kind of exciting because of the tools that I've worked with Visual Studio is by far the most powerful well-maintained and um, uh, fully featured integrated development environment so I'm kind of excited about that uh, for one thing, I, it's very complex, but it's certainly um, it is extremely flexible. And having it be more flexible as far as which operating systems it's going to run on is pretty exciting stuff, too. Well, exciting is relative. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and let this cook here, and uh, I'll come back when it's done. <clears throat> Okay, the Python component should be installed now, so let me go ahead and launch it again. Notice how fast it came up this time, which is normal. Okay, I make a new project. And uh, this time I should be able to choose Python, as you can see I can. And I can choose, you know, I don't know, from existing Python code, make a Python application, use Iron Python. Iron, Iron Python 
uh, allows me to go ahead and interact with uh, the .NET framework, which is a whole bunch of uh, applic uh, excuse me, a whole bunch of modules, if you would, uh, DLLs that have tons of code. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose from an existing Python code, and I'm going to go ahead and browse. Let's see, Python, and I'm going to choose this folder. And I think there's really not much more I want to do. Just say next, and next, and finish. And you can see it found my Python files from the last module. So here I can double click on a, a file and do my editing. Zoom in is, is easy for me because you hold down the control button and you roll in the mouse wheel. Uh, line numbers, there's something that we kind of had before, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Let's see, it is under oh, Tools, Options. Um, text editor, all languages, turn on the line numbers. Tools, documents, no, excuse me. Tools, options, text editor, all languages, line numbers. Okay. And uh, I want to go ahead and run this. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and say start. Uh, without debugging or with debugging. If I start without debugging, um, it's going to make a Python solution file. You'll see that it just opens up and runs the code. If um, if I want to put a breakpoint on here and watch what's going on, I can do that too. I'll just click here in the margin, right click and say start with debugging. And you can see it goes through and, and pauses. And I can um, I can step into the various lines of code by hovering up here at the top. So step into. It has gone through. And if you hover over a variable, it's really easy to, to see what that variable is going to come out as. It shows that it is coming out as underscore underscore main. In fact, you'll notice that there's an autos window, which picks up the variables automatically. So I'll continue. I haven't made a new employee object yet, but it does tell me that employee uh, is a module. And if I hit the little down arrow here, I can see that there is a class called employee inside it and employee list. And the person class is associated in a different module. And if I click on that, I can keep drilling down. I mean, that's, that's some pretty nice functionality. As I continue on, <clears throat> it steps into the other module, Employees. I can continue on in this way. And uh, this line of code hasn't finished yet, but now it has. And that variable E now has an employee object. And you can also see the little arrow here allows me to investigate things about it. So similar to what we've been using and PyCharm, but this is uh, Microsoft's premier development tool. And as you can see, it's not much harder to get used to. Uh, many students will uh, go on to try other foundation classes, including the C-sharp class. And if you do, I'm hoping that um, your experience with using something like PyCharm will help you to understand, or at least cut down some of the pain of learning a new environment. To develop a, uh, a new file, all I have to do is just right click and say add a, oops, it's currently running. Uh, it does say debugging right now here at the top, so I'll just hit the stop button. Okay, and let me make a new file. Python um, deals with, pro, uh, excuse me, Visual Studio deals with projects. Projects are collected into solutions. So solution is a collection of one or more projects. And just like in PyCharm, a project is a collection of one or more uh, programming files. I'm going to right click on the project and I'll add a, a new Python item. Let's see, let me scroll over a little bit. 
<clears throat> new item, and I'll just choose. Uh, well, how about a, a Python, empty Python file, or maybe a, a Python class? And you'll see that all it did was make me a py file and type in a few lines of code. These templates are truly that. They're just little templates to kind of get you started. <clears throat> Notice that there's a, a whole bunch of different files available, just like we saw in PyCharm. And uh, that's kind of handy. <clears throat> And we'll see <clears throat> unknown type print. I'll try this. Not sure where we got. Is there an extra space in front? Nope, there's not. Okay, start without debugging. And so just hit any key to continue. That way, uh, you notice the windows it doesn't flash and close immediately. Um, Microsoft, when you start without debugging, test it in the command window just like you would um, use it in real life. Uh, and then they also put in the feature where it will uh, pause so you can look at your work. So that's a nice feature. And I just right clicked on the background and said start without debugging instead of going over here and uh, choosing a file and doing the same. So um, <clears throat> anyway, that is the, the basics of using Visual Studio as an editor. Uh, the start is to get a copy of it. So Visual Studio uh, 20, well, I'll just cl click on the developer tools. Uh, the, the free one is the community edition. Download that, install it. Um, there is coming in the future uh, Visual Studio for other uh, platforms like Apple and I'm not sure what Android is going to be doing here in the future, but uh, anyway, it, uh, it is going to be open source, it's going to be free, so good stuff ahead, worth your time looking, checking into. If you have the time, if you have the bandwidth, I'd recommend downloading it and uh, trying out those steps that I just showed you. As you can see, it doesn't take very long. Um, give it yourself a couple hours. And uh, just try installing the Python module, or excuse me, Python plugin, I should say. And then once you're done, you know, just go ahead and play around with the files. I think you'll find that it's, once you've learned how to use an editing tool similar to this, such as PyCharm, uh, learning how to use Visual Studio is not that much more difficult. Anyway, that's it for this video. Next up on the list, I want to talk a little bit about um, working with other languages.